What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. We got the last the last and only surviving peacock screaming out there. I don't know how many times I started the video being like, oh, well, we lost something else to a coyote, but uh, we did lose one of our peacocks to a coyote, so we have one left, which sucks. But as you guys can see, it's been super, super overcast. In fact, uh, about a week or two ago, this layer actually dropped where it was just super foggy all day, and the coyotes just took advantage of that and were able to sneak up on our peacock. But enough of the bad news. Today is all about good news. Today is a huge day for the ranch. It is a huge day for my life and my life goals and my life dreams. Guys, we got a new big piece of equipment showing up at the ranch today. I am beyond excited for this. I have wanted one of these since I was a kid. As you guys know, three years ago, uh, well, two and a half years ago, I bought Rhino Ranch, which is where we're standing right now. Uh, it was way more acreage than I planned on purchasing. However, it was just time, opportunity, price, like it just all made sense. We just needed to buy it and give it a go. So that's what I did. I just jumped in blindly and bought into this much property uh, without really knowing what the heck was going on. First piece of equipment we bought out here was my Mini X. Again, another dream purchase as a kid. I always wanted a Mini X. I had used a few on some job sites, but I had never owned one. And I was like, oh, this is like a huge life goal. So within the first year, I bought the Mini X. And I feel like I've done pretty dang good with this much property, just having a Mini X to maintain it. But if you guys have been following in the past year uh, we've gotten a lot of rain and the property is just it's more than I can handle with a mini X <laughs> we need something much bigger and today that is showing up so any minute now any minute now I'm just staring down the driveway like I'm a kid waiting for Sandy Claus to come down the chimney I got to give a shout out to San Joaquin Tractor Co in Bakersfield I bought this thing sight unseen I spent an absolute ton of money sight unseen and I'm very nervous I've never seen one of these in person never sat in one of these in person I have no clue and I hope it's worth every penny now while we wait for my new piece of equipment to show up check out something really cool that has shown up for the coyote hunting blind since we're speaking of coyotes and losing uh, one of our peacocks you know we need to start taking this seriously actually I've only spent one day up in here or one like evening I should say uh, since this thing was finished I've just been so busy however that's about to change so currently the the hunting blind is getting powered via an extension cord that runs all the way back to my house and that's pretty ghetto but my intentions with this thing were always to have its own dedicated power source and you're about to see that right now this is super super cool we're gonna unbox this together real quick right in the back of the old bronco we've got check this thing out inside this box is all the power we need to not only run the hunting blind but really to run a bunch of stuff I've been super interested in these battery systems since they came out. No, we don't eat the box. We, 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 we don't eat the box. Look at this packaging. I am a sucker for packaging. You guys know. If you've seen any of the stuff from Work For It, you know we are suckers for packaging. Oh, oh, look at that. We don't even have to cut it. It's got a freaking pull tab on it. Let's see. It looks like we got a charging cable. Look at this. We even got a 12 volt charger we'll figure out a little bit more in a second ho, 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 ho. like this box looks pretty big right but check this out this is all we're working with right here the ecoflow delta 2 max so this is the ecoflow delta 2 max portable battery backup system or Portable just battery system, I, I think is the right terminology for it. These are like the things you can take camping in your RV, your tent, uh, to the beach, to an event. If you're like a photographer or videographer and you need somewhere to always charge your equipment, like this is the ticket right here. Or if you're like me and you want to power a hunting blind, I think this is going to pull it off. Just looking around the thing, I'm seeing a ton of USB ports. It's got Bluetooth pairing, uh, USB-C ports, and then we got the big power on the back. Look at this, six outlets that what's down here 12 volt like cigarette lighter ac on and off what is, oh that's alternating current i was like this has got air conditioning but what's crazy is ecoflow also makes a portable true battery powered air conditioner like i'm gonna show you guys their website right here for a second these guys make a lot of cool stuff and they're not paying me to tell you this they did send me this which i'm very grateful for uh because i actually wanted to purchase one of these but they have a lot of really cool stuff from battery backup systems to portable air conditionings, portable refrigerators, and even a robotic lawnmower. All right, let's just see what happens if we hit the power button. Okay, okay. We're at 30% charged. 
Is that still 99 hours? 85 hours, so I'm assuming that's at the current draw. Now, they have a bunch of different models. So this provides up to 2400 watts of power, but it also has a X boost mode, which is 3400 watts of output. So basically, if you have like a startup on a bigger appliance, this thing will account for it. Now, I'm a numbers man myself. Numbers are what matters, right? So this will run a refrigerator for 14 hours. It'll run a Wi-Fi router for 97 hours, a microwave for 1.3 hours, washing machine, a washing machine for 3.3 hours, TV for 15 hours these things are freaking rad and they're expandable you can add up to three of these they have extra batteries that you can buy and you can get up to six kilowatts of output which is great for any type of home backup stuff uh, you guys know we lose power out here a lot because they're always working on the power lines and we constantly have to run a generator to power our stuff in our house this right here is going to be a game changer no longer do we need to sit there and fire up a generator loud keep it running and all that this thing will not only power the hunting blind but i'm going to be using this in times of need for the house you're probably saying right now well what happens when, you know, the battery dies? Ha ha ha, don't worry, we thought of that. Inside the hunting blind, we have a 220 watt solar panel system. And you can connect up to a thousand watts, so basically four of these, to charge that thing. Or obviously you can plug it in to charge it as well. But if you're all about being either off grid uh, or you just don't have power, it will charge up off of this solar panel. And again, you can connect up to four of these solar panels depending on your charging needs. So that is how we're going to be charging it for the hunting blind. Because again, you know, there's no point in having to go take it down to the house. Let's use the free power of the sun. And just to prove, you know, we are gonna be running fully off of this thing. There's the cord, plugs into the bottom of the hunting blind. Let's plug this in to our battery system. Okay, she is on first test. Look at that, lights work. We'll turn the TV on. All right, TV is on. And here's the real test. Can the fireplace turn on? We are currently running everything in here. Let's turn the heater on. And you guys know heaters draw a ton of power, like an absolute ton. I don't know which one's the heater button. Uh, there we go. Okay, so the heater is on. You guys can probably hear the fan blowing out there. So we're currently drawing through 732 watts. That heater draws an absolute ton of power. This heater's been on for like three minutes and it is already super toasty in here. I don't anticipate this thing being able to run a heater forever. Again, heaters are giant electricity draws. Basically, they're converting electricity into heat. So it takes a lot to run these things. This place is so tiny that it only needs to run for like five minutes, heat this place up and you are good to go. This is like a game changer out here. No more tacky extension cord running all the way to the house. I gotta give a huge thank you to the folks over at EcoFlow for sending this out to me. I am super excited. Check out their website. They've got a lot of really cool and innovative stuff that I think you guys will like. It's actually really cold out here this morning, so uh, I just wanna hang out right here next to the fireplace. I don't think I've ever actually needed it for warmth because we finished this thing and it was like 95 degrees out. Nice to have, all running off of a battery right now. Now I'm gonna fully charge this thing up and I wanna do some tests on 100% battery capacity, how long we can run inside of the hunting blind. The good thing is you really don't have to sit here and wait all day because uh, it'll give you an idea and it'll actually tell you the runtime based on the amount of watts that you are using. There, I'll put a link down in the description to these things if you guys want to check them out. Uh, but these things have so many uses. I feel like everybody's shown at least one of them. Okay, guys, I just saw it come down the road. I'm gonna go meet him at the gate. He's got a 40 foot gooseneck and we know that's not gonna fit in the driveway. So we're gonna have to offload this thing on the street uh, with all the attachments. Oh boy, I'm so excited, guys. Oh, is he gonna try to turn in here? Oh, he's trying. There's no way. Besides the trailer. Oh, you should make it if you just swing real wide on that side. Ooh, guys. All right, so he ended up bringing a smaller trailer, which worked out well. So he actually made it in the driveway. Oh, I'm so stoked for this. So, so stoked for this. Ooh, there she is, y'all. There she is. So we got the bucket unloaded. He is going back up on the trailer. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Tilt decks can get a little sketchy. Gonna grab the grapple.
Probably got it. Well, we lost the peacock, but we've got two wild turkeys just uh, strolling through the yard. Okay guys, here she is. My 2023 Coyote RX 7320 power shuttle with just about every single option I could put onto this thing. Oh, just look at her. Just look at her. You guys want to stare at her together with me? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I officially own my very first farm tractor and I am beyond stoked. Now I know she ain't some big, you know, combine ain't the biggest tractor in the world but for what i got going on here being that i'm not plowing this entire property or anything like that i feel like this was honestly bigger tractor than i needed but i didn't want to buy something and regret not going bigger let's talk about brands for a second because i know this is going to be like chevy and ford and all that and we're going to have this big kerfuffle in the comment section on tractor brands i was initially looking at a kubota um, and I had my mind set, dead set on buying a Kubota. Reason I didn't is I went to go actually order one during uh, COVID. And when I went to the dealership, uh, apparently out here, cab tractors are just like, they're not a thing. So when I was talking to the dealership, the sales guy, I'm like, hey man, I'm here to order a cab tractor. And he's like, oh, a cab tractor? For like, you know, Southern California, I get it. Like we don't have horrible weather. However, it gets hot here, but most people buying these tractors, they're just putting their farm workers in them. So they don't spend the extra money for a cab for their workers to be comfortable. I refuse to buy anything now without a cab, unless it's like some antique or something you can get a really, really good deal on. So basically what he had told me was if I ordered a cab tractor, it was at least a year out and I needed $8,000 down, non-refundable. I'm like, yeah, there's no way with how like, obsolete parts were at the time. I'm not gonna just tie up $8,000 in a, it might show up, but it's not a refundable deal. I eventually ended up talking to another dealer a uh, little while later, which is actually the dealership that I got my uh, Bobcat from, because they also sell Kubota, but they're out of state. And they're like, oh yeah, it'd probably take like six months and we don't even need a deposit. So I was like, all right, maybe I'll order it. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, went back and forth a hundred times. And then all of a sudden, like the prices just started going up 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 on Kubota tractors and I'm like well I don't know if I want to spend that much money <laughs> so I started looking around and well Coyote popped up and if you guys don't know Coyote is a Korean brand I know it's not American it is what it is they make a really good tractor I have researched these things inside and out for the last six months or so and I have very seldomly seen anything bad talked about a coyote tractor so through my research i'm like that's it done deal you know what i'm gonna settle for a coyote there might be a couple of little differences between this and the kubota that i was looking at however um for the money like you just can't beat these things uh, now granted this still was not cheap there is a lot of money sitting right here especially with all the attachments which we'll talk about in a second but i think i made the right decision i hope i made the right decision we're gonna find out we got a brand new zero hour tractor well i mean maybe zero hour i don't know uh, i'm gonna walk you around the outside and tell you the additions that we did to it it's funny i actually just had to stop filming because the owner of san joaquin tractor co just called me up and this guy has been paramount through the entire process keeping me updated with pictures videos all kinds of stuff because obviously you're spending this much much money and you're having add-ons done and you, well we've already apparently we've adopted a new cat this thing just showed up the other day Jesus this is just like animals on animals on animals hey if you're gonna live here make sure there's no mice or anything that get up in this thing all right so anyways Brian the owner of San Joaquin Tractor Co just called me up and he's like hey did you get your tractor everything looks great cool you know call me for this 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 like whatever you need um, they have been absolutely awesome here is their information they've got uh, three different dealerships, one in Bakersfield, one in, I don't know where Wasco is, and I have no idea where Delano is. If you guys are in the market, I think they do New Holland too, don't quote me on that. San Joaquin Tractor Co though, they have been top notch. Like, I don't just say that. I didn't mention YouTube to them. I didn't say, you know, if this experience goes bad, I'm gonna blast you guys on YouTube or anything like that. And the reason I never say that to people is because I want the full experience on how anybody would, you know, be treated. And these guys have been top freaking notch. Let's dive into the tractor, because I'm so excited. When I bought this thing, um, they had it sitting on the lot, but I added a bunch of stuff to it. And the reason I did it now is because, well, it's easier to do it now than it is to try and, you know, me do it myself or find a mechanic down here that's gonna know these tractors or anything like that. So I just had everything installed at the dealer. First things first, obviously we have the KL7320 loader. Tractors like this don't really come with loaders, right? This is an option. This is what you add on to it. 
Normally they're just the base, which you see down there. Loaders are great, but like how can we make a loader cooler? You add a third function. You will see right here we have hydraulic valves. And this is basically the same setup that you would have on a skid steer. Obviously a little bit different on a tractor than it would be on a skid steer, but same concept to where we have hydraulic flow. And the reason we have that is for attachments like this. This is a hydraulic grapple and it's kind of folded up right now. But what this will do is we can run around. I'm very excited about this. Um, you know, if we're cutting a bunch of trees and stuff, I come in with this grapple. And because I now have hydraulics on the front where most tractors don't have hydraulics on the front, I can now actually have a function on the front. It's called a third function. I'll be able to get into a pile of brush, tree trimmings, whatever, and I'll be able to actually grab it with the grapple and take them somewhere. And you can do a bunch of other stuff. We can put an auger on the front of this thing. Um, I don't know exactly the hydraulic flow. I wanna say it's like 24 gallons a minute, which is pretty dang good. Um, it's not quite like big skid steer good, but for a farm tractor, 24 gallons a minute up front, that's pretty good. So we'll be able to run a bunch of skid steer style attachments off the front. And I've already been like attachment shopping like crazy. I mean, you can already see, we've got, the, you know, obviously the standard bucket, we've got the grapple, and then of course, you gotta have a set of forks. These are the heavy duty forks. Like oof, to be able to move pallets around here, guys, I have so many pallets back in my block department, Rhino block and brick over there that I've been waiting to take out of here. But I'm like, dude, I don't want to stack 40 pallets in the bed of my truck. We got forks now. Moving on to the back. Here's where things get like really, really cool. So on a standard tractor, you have your three point hitch attachment, right? Obviously one, two, three, you have three points that things attach to. And most tractors have up and down, right? Like this entire attachment can go up and down. And that's about it. Well, if you're trying to grade something out, especially something with a 84 inch box blade that we have on the back or box scraper or Gannon, whatever you want to call it, a bunch of you know different names for these things. That's a large width. And if your tractor is sitting at an angle and you drop this thing down, it's going to be stuck at the angle that the tractor is at. So it really makes grading things out kind of a pain in the butt because you kind of have to move some dirt around to try to get the tractor to level if you want the box on the back to be level. So to solve that, we have a dual top and tilt kit. And what that does is it gets rid of just normal links being here and we now have hydraulics everywhere. So we've got hydraulic there, hydraulic there, and a hydraulic top link. Now what we can do is we can tilt this box blade left and right, right? So we can level the blade even if the tractor's not level. So if we're trying to like grade out on this hillside and I want a level road going through here, if the tractor's like this, I'm screwed. Well, now if the tractor's like this, I can put the blade like this and get back to level. And on top of that, we've got our third hydraulic up top. And what that allows is we can curl this thing back. So these things dig differently based on the angle that they're at. So instead of this thing just coming straight flat down, I can now curl this basically like a fully functioning skip loader would have is what we can do with this whole setup here. And then it really just opens up the door to all kinds of attachments that we can run off the back. Those options were all added by San Joaquin. Again, just a quick phone call. I didn't even put any money down on the tractor and they just started bolting these options on for me and ordering them up. And like, there was no, oh, well, we need some money up front. None of that. They were super, super easy to work with. She is a four wheel drive tractor. I mean, this tractor is just pretty much like as decked out as you want. I mean, let's just hop inside. And again, I've never seen a coyote tractor in person. So this is my first experience with this thing. Oh, I don't even want to get the floor dirty. Ooh, she's got a cushioned floor. It's like almost diamond stitched, kind of. Hold on guys, we got to christen it. First water bottle. This thing's got a lot of room for water bottles. Let me tell you. See, we got a suspension seat. All right. Welcome to Ryan's childhood dream. Look at this 360 degree view that you have up here. You're not stuck in a skid steer. You're not feeling trapped in. You're not getting beat up all day long. For mowing like this amount of property, I want to be able to sit up here, be comfortable, have a good view all the way around, and not just feel claustrophobic and trapped in. All right, let's take a look around. This is a power shuttle tractor, which is a really cool feature because God forbid, you know, these are manual tractors. You've got your gear selector here. And hello, kitty. What are you doing? Yep, y'all are just gonna enjoy this thing, huh? The other cat was just over here hunting something. I haven't really looked around much, but we've got um, our ranges, neutral, low, high, medium range. Our gear selector, there is four speeds plus these. I don't know what the, what the four times four, 16, no, no, four times three, 12 gears. Let me move my little sweet goodie bag that I got. Check this out, guys. You guys are gonna be excited. Look at that. We've got a Coyote tumbler, even though this does have a coffee cup holder. Uh, even though everybody freaks out when I drink out of a coffee cup and not a tumbler. Okay, so we've got our throttle, uh, our brake, and we've got our clutch. Now, what's cool about this being a power shuttle 
is you don't need to clutch it to go forward and backwards or anything like that. There's no reverse over here. This is, it's like a forklift. You literally, you want to go forward, forward. You want to go back, there's backwards. Doesn't matter, does not need the clutch at all. Now, if you're shifting gears, you're cruising down the road, you're cruising to the other side of the property, you don't even need to use this because they got a thumb clutch right there. It's just an electronic thumb clutch. You literally pop that bad boy in and now you can shift to whatever gear you want. Um, super, super simple. Again, like I didn't want this to be a workout. You know, skid steers are very simple as well. But these farm tractors, there's usually a lot going on in these things. And the simpler you can make it, the more user friendly and the less fatigue you have on your body. We've got a big old back window here that opens up. Uh, I don't want to open it too far because I can't really get it back. Uh, big window that opens up there. These both side windows here open for good cross ventilation. Probably my favorite part and obviously the reason you buy an enclosed cab is we've got air conditioning and we've got heater. And there are vents everywhere. Vents, 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 vents. Uh, what was that rear defroster? We got recirculation, or maybe this is the inlet vent. I think it's the inlet vent. Uh, recirculation or fresh air. This thing is fully decked out. We've got a radio in it that already has Bluetooth. And check this out. It's got a cigarette lighter, which you know most people use for 12 volt power source, but <laughs> it's actually a cigarette lighter. I don't know if people are still making these things. So that'd be good to charge our phones. We've got a little storage cubby here, and. Uh, 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 uh. All right, I don't want to break that. But apparently all the fuses are in there, so easy to get to all of your fuses, much easier than on my Bobcat. Uh, one cup holder, two cup holders, three cup holders, which is nice. Over here, we've got our regen button. Uh, I don't know what that button does. Oh, that's, no, I don't know what that button does. We'll figure out what that button does. Auto or manual PTO. Uh, this is how you turn the PTO on. It's just a quick little twist and then pull it to out, I don't know, whatever. Super easy to go, got all your buttons here, lights, windshield wipers, uh, cruise control for the PTO. We got an visor up here, you know, we'll block the sun, dome light. Speakers, obviously, up front, we'll see if they're loud enough, you know, we might have to deck this thing out. This tractor is really quiet, and obviously, you know, it's a newer tractor. There's no diesel exhaust fluid, though. So this is a 73 horse tractor, which keeps it under the regulation of needing diesel exhaust fluid. Oh geez, this cat is just everywhere. And in talking to the dealership, they say about every 100 hours, this thing will actually do a regen. So it's not very common. Um, it might do it a little more sooner for me because I'm probably not gonna put that many hours on it. But I mean, there's just visibility everywhere. Look, you got a window down there to get your top link. You've got this giant window. Now again, you can see she is super quiet. Alrighty y'all, maiden voyage. So one of the other things with a lot of loaders, oh, we only got one armrest, I feel like it should be two armrests, but maybe not, it's supposed to be shifting, is if you buy like the smaller tractors, the joystick control right here for your loader arms is like always in a weird spot. You kind of like have to be like this all day long using it. This one's actually in a comfortable spot. You can sit back. And again, once you start sizing up the tractors, you go with the real big, big boy tractors, like the joystick is right here, like it should be on like a big wheel loader or something. But on these, you really got to find that compromise between size and comfort. And I think this one nailed it. On the front of the joystick, I don't know if you guys can see, there is a little button right here, a little switch. And that is actually for the third function. So this was added um, and that enables us to again control the hydraulics up front. We're gonna put her into first gear. Okay, we got the clutch in. And then from here, we don't need to clutch. All we need is the power shuttle lever, which is right here like a forklift. All right, y'all, it's gonna take a little getting used to, but look. Jesus. See, like, this is already way more comfortable than being, like, jammed into a skid steer. Got our blade in the back up. We're looking good. We're sitting up high. You're not getting claustrophobic. We'll turn the radio on. Let's see. Not the best speakers. I think we need a little speaker upgrade on this. I'm gonna try to not bushwhack with this thing. I want to keep this thing, like, pristine. You guys know me. This is a brand new thing. Like, it's it's got to be pretty. I will take her down some hills. Now again, like you're playing this game of like farm tractors. Some are very tippy depending on the size. So I actually had them fill the tires with water or fluid or whatever fluid that they use to fill the tires because that's a big counterweight in the back. Especially when you have the loader arms in the front, you're basically making like a big teeter-totter. And if you try to pick up something heavy and you have no weight in the rear, the tractor's just gonna want to endo. So we have uh, liquid fuel rear tires, plus obviously the uh, box plate on the back. Sick, look at it, like so comfortable. So comfortable just to sit back. Imagine mowing this field, like I'm excited. 
Um, in terms of mower, you probably see I do not have a mower. The reason being is I want like a 10 foot to 12 foot bat wing mower, something that has, you know, hinges on it so it flexes for the contour of the ground. However, those are very expensive. They're like $18,000. Uh, I don't want to spend $18,000 after spending all the money I spent on this thing. So, I'm probably going to end up buying something cheaper just in the meantime, which is really what I didn't want to do, but if one of you guys out there has a used one that you know of, let me know, because I'd like to buy it sooner rather than later so we can mow this whole field. This thing is super overgrown. All right, let's try a little shift. So we're going to shift in a second. We're not even going to use the clutch. We're going to use just a little button on the side of the shifter. Super easy, super easy. We need some air conditioning. It's a little toasty up in here now. You guys, you have no idea how freaking excited I am to finally, like, I gotta thank all of you guys. If you guys haven't noticed, this YouTube channel is just like all of my childhood dreams coming true. Owning a bunch of land that we can just be kids on and play on. Buying equipment, buying trailers, buying trucks, like, these are my childhood dreams coming true, and it takes a ton of work. I've been busting my butt to be able to afford this tractor, and it's finally freaking here, and I'm so excited. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. That is a fact. This is a good sized tractor. We're gonna have to do some tree trimming. We're coming down into the low line tree section here, but she's tall. We're gonna end up hitting some trees. We gotta go around these buggers right here. We go back into first gear. This is very nice. Not having to use the actual foot clutch and just having the button on the side. Very, very nice and convenient. Good thing is with the big tires too, is we're not like we're bushwhacking, but we're not bushwhacking. We're not beating up the body because the tires and this thing sits pretty dang high. We'll go through the field. Uh, that's a pretty good ditch. I don't feel like it's like, stuck on You know what? We might make it. We might make it. All right, look at this. No clutch, forward reverse. It's pretty wild. Power shuttle is the way to go. I'm gonna use the foot clutch because we're crawling through a pretty good sized ravine. <laughs> She's insured though, you know, so if we roll it, apparently that, that's covered. It's covered in insurance. Oh. We're we gonna make it, we're we gonna make it, no problem. No problem for the old coyote. Yeah, baby. This side of the property has never been graded. It is super bumpy. But now we got a way to grade this stuff out. I know this is a foreign vehicle and everybody's gonna freak out. She's got a Daydong 74 horsepower or 73 horsepower engine in her. And you know, I hate to say it, but some of the foreign stuff's pretty dang reliable. I mean, I don't hate to say it because I really hope this one is one of those. Oh my God, guys, I'm so excited. Is all of our rippers up or oh, we got two rippers down? All right, I'm gonna go put our rippers up and let's do a little box scraping. The one compromise I made by switching over from Kubota to Coyote, at least like in terms of functions that I really wanted was a buddy seat. So the Kubota, I was looking at the M4 series Kubota, actually had a flip down seat right here. It wasn't a big seat, you know, I'm gonna put, you know, Chris ain't gonna be able to ride with me. Cool to have the option of like somebody could cruise with you. You could bring your girl along or something like that. So I might try to figure out a way. This cab is a little bit smaller but there might be some type of way we can figure out to mount a buddy seat up in this. Okay, this design, not my favorite. Let's get these rippers up. <clears throat> to get this last one, you gotta get your fingers up in this little tight area to try to pull this like ungodly tight pin out. And again, you can like deck these tractors out as much as you want. So you can get box blades with a hydraulic ripper. So if these rippers, literally you hit a button, the rippers come down. Like the less you have to get out of the tractor, the more efficient you're gonna be and the better. That's why I've done the modifications I've done so far but we're not done, we're never done. You guys already know. I've already been, like I've got carts and carts of parts for a lot of the cool stuff that I'm gonna end up doing to this thing inside the cab, outside the tractor, camera systems, like this thing's gonna get pretty decked out. This one, however, this, this we gotta find a solution for. I gotta attach something to this. Ugh, it's hard to get in there and get that little booger out. Get them on pin. I'm guessing the transport guys didn't wanna do this either. That's why these ones were left down. They're not fun to get in here and Unpin. We've got all these roads that go around the property and I've just never had a good efficient way to maintain them. I've hit them with the backfill blade on the Mini X and it's just like super, super slow. Gets plugged up with uh, some vegetation and then like you're just skating on top of that. So we don't want to deal with that. Now let me show you guys the dual top and tilt functions of the box scraper. So this lever right here, it's making the box go this way. So 
You can see we've got really good angles on there. Let's max her all the way out. Look at this thing. Look at that angle. Oh, we're gonna be doing some work. Then this one is what curls it underneath. So you see her curl right there. All right, and then down here is where we can lower the implement right there. And you can see she goes up and down. I don't really know. So we got two levers for it. Again, I, I'm not a farm tractor guy. We got some learning to do. Uh, this one looks like you can set your how low you want it to go and like max out that way. So you've got that lever, but then you've also got this lever that does something. Let's put her in low range, medium. We're not gonna be doing heavy dirt work back there. Gonna take a little getting used to, especially considering I'm currently doing everything with one hand. Now you'll notice, and you'll see most people that use and drive farm tractors is half the time you're spent sitting sideways looking backwards. We can't have that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm hitting random buttons over here, wrong ones. So I've got solutions for this. At least I think we're gonna try some cool stuff with this tractor in terms of, again, camera systems, lighting, Stereo. Obviously, she's gonna need some tints because we're in a big fishbowl, even though we do have air conditioning, so that's good. Jeez, I really wish I had my GoPro head mount because I need this hand. But I want you guys to see what's going on back there. Uh, let's do a little more curl. Nope, too much curl. All right, we're farming now. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the horrible camera view. It's like 15 things you gotta focus on. So far, y'all, I am loving every bit of this thing. So I got the throttle just controlled there. I have no feet on anything right now. And I'm just kind of focusing on behind me and take a peek up front every once in a while. And you can see, I mean, I've never had an efficient way to grade these roads out and at least like scrape them clean. You know, especially now we got snake season coming up. You don't want to be walking around the property and, you know, trudging through weeds. So I did put her in four wheel drive because we're on a bunch of steep hills and this dirt is very hard. So when it starts to dig in, uh, the back tires wanted to spin a little bit. So it's just on demand four wheel drive. You just you just push the button right there she lights up and really the tractor is doing all the work right now so again like you can see one of my problems being is like i have to constantly keep doing this um, or you end up sitting sideways like this that ain't no fun we're gonna fix that guys i am seriously freaking loving this you know i'm finally in the farm tractor club in the neighborhoods i was just over at a neighbor showing him uh james should be off at some point today uh, we'll let him check this thing out but i mean just in like a few minutes of playing with this thing and figuring it out. We, uh, you know, we're already cutting the roads around the property. This is gonna be a freaking game changer out here. I'm so excited, so excited to try out all the implements. I've got piles and piles and piles of brush and plants and telephone poles and all kinds of stuff that needs to get moved around the property. So at some point we'll throw the grapple on and uh, see how that does with the third function. And again, the controller for the third function is just a little uh, switch that was added. But this thing is super comfortable. Let me turn off my gangster rap music because you know you gotta be listening to some gangster rap while you're farming. My favorite part though is look at like you don't have to touch the clutch or anything. You want to, uh, you know, put her into neutral, you just tap your power shuttle switch there. Obviously you need some brakes so we don't roll down. We're on a little bit of an incline, but this thing's just got all kinds of little features. Look at it, it's even got an adjustment here to adjust where your armrest sits. You want a little bit higher, you just spin that booger up and she'll sit higher and like this thing's comfortable the seat's a little bit stiff sure obviously it'll break in and i'm trying to figure out exactly where my spot is in this thing i'm very impressed sick look at that pulling up we got the dump truck now we've got the coyote this is the one coyote though we don't hit with a slingshot we gotta keep this coyote good we'll take out the other coyotes that eat our animals but we keep this coyote good yeah, now we got a new way to uh, refresh the driveway gravel that was just covered in mud from all the rains. Oh, the possibilities are endless with this thing. Now I know because somebody's gonna say it, a skid steer and a farm tractor are two very different things. You wanna dig a bunch of dirt, you're not doing it with a farm tractor and a front loader. I mean, you could, but you're gonna be miserable. So there's still a skid steer in my future at some point. RZ, you gotta spend money, you gotta make money. So we gotta make a bunch more money back to uh, offset this cost. And, uh, oh, you're digging it? Oh, we're good, we're good. But to me, if I gotta travel all the way to the other side of the property, bouncing around, going through the trees in a skid steer, I get dizzy. Uh, being so low, being confined, it just doesn't do well for me. I've been all around the property in neighbor's houses, down the street, up the street in this thing today, and I am just freaking loving life. 
Let's give the old 360 camera a try. Uh, the main reason I bought this thing is I'm gonna come up with some creative mounts for the equipment to mount 360 cameras, probably up outside, um, and give like really cool perspectives of doing work. For now though, I wanna go try the pallet forks out. Let's go grab a stack of pallets. I'm gonna do another video where we put all the toys that I got to the test. Sorry if this camera is shaky. Uh, it's just sitting on a tripod on the floor right now, a little bouncy. Might have a trailer in the way, maybe not. Now, hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm on my AirPods, talking through the 360 camera. Now, here's where things... Oh, oh, we stalled it. <laughs> uh, here's where things get a little bit interesting. And one of the things we're going to fix... Why did it just stall again? Uh, figured it out, guys. I set it up off the seat. And apparently it's got a shut off if you get up off the seat. On loaders like this, this isn't the steers where you look down and you can see your forks in front of you or bucket in front of you. On loaders, they're so far out and you have the hood in the way, it's very, very hard to see where those fork tips are. And most people, you know, you stand up, it's probably the easiest way to see it, but apparently if I stand up, then the tractor shuts off. So let's see, oh, well, we actually did pretty decent. I think we actually got the whole stack. Look at that. Oh, it's going to be a game changer being able to move pallets. Heck yeah. But I want to be able to see this better. So, you know, I know I keep hinting at like modifications that I have coming for this, but we're going to be doing some really cool stuff with this tractor. You guys know I can't leave anything stock, including my equipment. So can we pull out? Oh, yeah. Pull-out game's still strong. Here's another thing I'm excited about. Look, we need to move the dumpster somewhere. Don't worry, y'all. We got forks. We can move this dumpster anywhere we need now on the property. Easy peasy. This has been so long overdue, guys. You have no idea. I mean, you do have an idea because you watch my videos, but look at this. Oh, we want to regrade this grill right here. No problem. Knock some of these weeds down. Let's see if the box scraper will do it. This power shuttle transmission is awesome. I cannot imagine what a pain in the butt it would be if we actually had to shift gears back, you know, from reverse to forward, forward to reverse, just our angle a little bit. Oh, here we go. Now we're doing some farming. Look at knocking all the weeds down, regrading out the gravel. Gonna keep the tenants in the guest house nice and happy. And yes, I know there's tools made specifically for resurfacing gravel driveways. Again, we'll, uh, we'll definitely amass a uh, big collection of attachments in the future. But for now, we're just gonna keep playing around and probably making a bigger mess than anything. There's a couple of things right off the bat that I would change. One of which is this shifter. You can see it's in a pretty ergonomic place. However, you're not using it as often as you would think. I mean, at least not on a property my size. I feel like this angle should have been angled back. It's not really blocking your range selector. And again, how often are you changing from low, medium to high range? Probably less than you are even shifting gears. So if this thing would have kicked back, it would open up this section right here to get in and out of the tractor. This side has like a hair more room, but you still have to contend with the loader joystick in the way. I don't know, I wonder if that's something I could do, either have a new piece made or flip this piece around. No, because you'd still kind of want the this thing facing forward. I don't know, I feel like we need to make a new piece that kind of comes back this way and then kicks up here, and then that'll open up this entire section and just make it easier getting in and out of the tractor. And I know these are little things, but I feel like everything that we have, we make cool improvements to. So there's just, we're just gonna put that on the list of things that we need to do for sure camera system my neck i've cracked it like 52 times sitting there staring backwards and i know most guys in tractors you kind of sit sideways like this that way you, you know you're not as cramped uh kind of turning your neck over to the side to check out what's going on in the implement behind you but now that i see all of this room i think a camera system some nice big monitors in here like we're gonna pimp this thing out gotta say guys i've only owned it for like a few hours, but I'm uh, very, very happy with this purchase right here. God, this thing is so sick. So happy to finally have a farm tractor out here. I mean, just being able to come through and just clean the roads back up that used to be around the property. It's gonna take me a little bit of time to get used to the Gannon on the back with all the pitches and all the angles and the rolling and all that, but 
once we get it done, it's gonna be dialed. I don't have time to sit here today and um, play with the grapple and connect all the attachments and do all that, so we'll do that in another video. But guys, this is a huge, huge dream come true for me. Obviously, it's here for work, um, and it was a very necessary purchase. However, like being able to buy something that you dreamed of being able to operate, drive, whatever you wanna call it as a kid, um, and I still consider myself a kid sometimes when I'm rolling around the property playing in stuff like this. Very blessed, very blessed, very excited, very happy for this new piece of equipment. But with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. And don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, like a big old tractor, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Yeah.